Well, good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we be glad in it. This is the third Sunday after Pentecost. We're in the uh, teaching half of the church year. It's a wonderful time for us to be able to remind ourselves and be taught all what it means to be the church. We're in kingdom of heaven, uh, thinking these uh, three weeks, this is the second of three, and we'll be thinking some thoughts through again about what it means for you and me to be part of the church in the kingdom of heaven. It's also Father's Day. Thank you, all you fathers out there. And we pray that every, every son and daughter has a father that models the life of Christ in their life in some way. This is also summer solstice. Uh, I like to think that this is really the first day of winter. Just throw that out there for you. And if that's all you get from today, I just chew on that for a while. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, you came to live that perfect life. You lived that innocent death. You died that death on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. You rose powerfully and victoriously over sin, death, and Satan so that we can be your people and be the church. Teach us to see this world through your eyes and how you are engaged in it. And then teach us, Lord, to follow where you would have us follow. Eyes open, ears alert, to see how we can be part of your wonderful mission in these troubling times. For the sake of your kingdom, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our worship begins in the way our lives in Christ begin in baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Psalm of the Week is from Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalk in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. 
If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, nor disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, that you will will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation.
us confess our sins. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infant mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we say, Amen. Amen. Killers, we've been members of St. Matthew's for over 50 years. We will be we will be leading you in prayer today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God, that as we have been baptized into Christ's death, we have also been raised with him to live a new life called to bring your gift of repentance and faith to the world where you have placed us. Infuse us with your compassion and empower us with your authority for this work of service. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. I have a question for you this morning. When have you ever given up? Hmm, maybe you were playing hide and seek and it was your job to find all of your friends. And you look and look and look and somebody is still hiding and you can't find him. You say, I give up, where are you? That might be, or maybe you've got a puzzle you need to put back 
put together and you've got a lot of the same color in there and it gets so frustrating because all the pieces just look the same and you're not making any progress toward getting it done and you finally say I give up and you put all the pieces back in the box or maybe you get a question like this that you need to try to answer this comes from a game called mind trap and it's a fun game to play but it's pretty hard here it is. Here's the question. There is an ancient, means very, very old, invention still used in some parts of the world today that allows people to see through walls. What is it? Do you give up? It's a window. Yeah, such an obvious answer. But sometimes the way things are worded make us want to give up. Have you wanted to give up this week? Give up with this COVID business? Give up with not being able to hang out with the people you want to hang out with? Oh, it's frustrating. It was frustrating for Jeremiah. God, God called him to be a prophet and he wanted to give up. But then he gave it to God and said, God, I want to give up, but you're, you're mighty, you're strong. And in our Matthew text today, we're going to see some words that say, Don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Sparrows are just tiny little things. And when you want to just give up because life isn't going well, God says, No, 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 you're important to me. Don't give up. Sometimes we just get so overwhelmed and so frustrated. Why are the people I love getting sick? Why did my pet die? Why are bad things happening? I want to just give up God. And God says, it's okay. Give it up to me. God can handle it. God can take it. And when we give up that stuff to God, he can come in and fill us with his love and his grace and with what he wants us to use to help other people. Don't give up. Give it to God. Let God fill you with his grace and his power. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, sometimes things in life are really frustrating, really hurtful, and I just want to give up. Let me give up, God, give up to you the things that hurt me. Give up to you the things that make me mad. Give up to you the things that make me angry so that you can fill me with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, I'm Will Hugo, and I'm reading the Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah 20. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name. His word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him, let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip saying, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. The word of the Lord.
Carol Blaze. And I'm Bruce Blaze. Our epistle lesson for today is from Romans chapter 6. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise wherever you are for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 10. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out the demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Behold, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to their councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how to respond or what to say. In that hour, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For many years, uh, I have prayer walked uh, South Minneapolis, starting at Trinity First on Franklin Avenue down uh, 10 blocks to Lake Street. And on Lake Street, uh, between Chicago Avenue and Bloomington Avenue, and then uh, spending time in the global market with uh, the folks who would be there, and then tracking up through uh, along Chicago Avenue, stopping by the Somali Mall on 24th, and working our way back to uh, Trinity First so that the people who would be accompanying us uh, um, would have the sights and the smells and the taste of uh, the central part of, of uh, the Phillips neighborhood and the top part, which is, uh, which is uh, Ventura Village. And during that period of time, uh, I also uh, was involved in urban ministry uh, after I left being your pastor and would be coaching pastors along the way who were involved in, uh, in learning communities with me. And one pastor in particular wanted to eat at a certain uh, eatery on the corner of uh, Bloomington and Lake Street, and we would meet there because he loved the food he could find there, which reminded him of what he ate when he lived in uh, Southern California. There's a, a, another eatery, uh, called a Somali restaurant, uh, kind of right on the corner of Lake Street and Chicago. And uh, it is a place that uh, I'd, I'd love to go with groups, sitting around a large table, and then they would bring out the, the array of foods of, uh, East, of East Africa and all its uh, wonderful smells. And, and people would always be surprised that in the middle of this array of food would be a huge dollop of spaghetti. And you didn't have a fork. Your fork was in Jura, a flatbread. And if you needed a napkin, there were sinks built into the wall of the eating area. Um, wonderful. Lake Street in those days uh, was just lively and active. The uh, mixture of the green and the red awnings just reminded one of the redevelopment of this beautiful beautiful street. So I prayer walked at that section again this past Wednesday. Wow. It's quiet. I saw maybe 20 people in the hour I was on the street. Rioting and looting just changed everything. Disrupted livelihoods. Maybe some are gone forever. I had a particular concern about those two eateries. I'd heard that the Somali restaurant had been damaged, and I wanted to see it. And on the corner, southwest corner of Bloomington and Lake, I know the history of that building. The man who bought that building had a vision for Lake Street. That Spanish-speaking people could be part of its revitalization. The night of the first riot, that was a busy, busy intersection. I began praying for that building. So as I walked up to it, I saw, it looks pretty good. And when I got across the street and looked at it, it was a banner that said, we're open. This guy, at great cost to himself, bought this two-story building, gave its tenants entrepreneurial training because he had a vision for his people on that street. I'll be walking that street two Wednesdays from now. I'm going to go in there 
I'm going to listen. I'm going to eat, too, by the way. One, at one time, one could just eat your way from the Mississippi River all the way down to Uptown. You could just, in ethnic restaurants, just one after another. Long expansion, much greater than what uh, we have in our wonderful section of Northeast Minneapolis, up and down from Lowry. Wonderful places to go and listen, and listen, and listen. I did get down to the Somali restaurant, walked back. I saw the damage. The windows were boarded up, got in front of it, and said, we're open. <laughs> I take a table pull down there sometime. I like to watch you eat spaghetti without a fork. It's, it's quite an experience. And it's a gift that these wonderful people who had such a great vision for Lake Street want to return and give again to its community. So along the way, I prayed, Lord, uh, give me the word, nudge me. First word, we live in the tensions. A pastor friend of mine is a parish pastor, part-time chaplain with the Minneapolis Police Department. He wrote a letter to his congregation regarding what had taken place at the last days of May and the first days of, of June, and he lamented that present circumstance. And then he said, One thing I treasure about our Lutheran heritage is that we pursue the contentment of living in the tensions. I want to say that again. He's one of our fine, fine young pastors. Uh, uh, Pastor Hugo is the cameraman. I have to look at his very handsome face today. And it's a pleasure, because it's a welcoming face. It's a welcoming face. I was chatting with him uh, Monday when we were having lunch together, and uh, I see him as a young man. Now, he's talking about the young men of our church body who are the fine young pastors who are inventing things and presenting the gospel in just great ways that even he and I learn from. And what a blessing that is. My pastor friend is one of those. We pursue contentment of living in the tensions. We are fully saint. We are fully sinner. We live in the now and we live in the not yet. Living in the tensions means that we know one day all that is evil, racism, hatred, murder, violence, anarchy, oppression, will be destroyed. But unfortunately, until Jesus comes back to make all things new, all that is evil will continue to exist in this broken world. Hear my friend again until Jesus comes back to make all things new. All that is evil will continue to exist in this broken world, and until then we pursue the contentment of living in the tensions. Note that this is not a passive exercise. No hunkering down here. To pursue the contentment of living in the tensions is Good news between the now and the what is coming of you and I being 100% saint, 100% sinner, of Christ our Savior being fully God and fully human. Think of Jesus entering this broken world, tempted in every way that you and I are tempted except without sin taking our imperfection upon himself and giving us his perfection, dying for, for our sins so that we need not die in our sin, rising on that third day, giving victory over sin, death, and Satan so that we can pursue the contentment of living in the tensions of his grace. This is the means of grace. 
the sacramental gift of repentance and faith that is God's good news in our daily living for this world in which we live, through which you and I daily put sin to death in our bodies and daily rise to the newness of life. That's good news. Receiving Christ's body and blood for the full forgiveness of our sins and being restored to serve God by serving others, that's good news. And there'll be good news we'll be able to do that in this place as God leads, daily immersing ourselves into his word to hear his voice be pointed to the spirit of truth that cuts through the clutter of all of the crap that's out there, voices that aren't voices of God, so that we can be bearers of this good news to a fallen world. In this fallen world, God's people pursue the contentment of living in the tensions of God's amazing grace, even the joy of it all. Hebrews 2 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We enter into his joy. As Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith through his word, molds our will to be conformed to his will, as we pursue the contentment of living in the tensions of God's grace. Living in the tensions. That's the first word that was confirmed as I walked Lake Street Wednesday morning. And the second was this. Welcome to life in the kingdom of God. Welcome to life in the kingdom of God. God is actively engaged in it. Jesus began his earthly ministry with these words, the kingdom of heaven is here. Repent and believe the good news. Matthew 4, same chapter. Jesus called his disciples, took them on a mission trip through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. In today's gospel that you heard read, Jesus sends out the twelve with these words, As you go preach this message, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Mark records the same event this way. So they set out and they preached that people should repent. They also drove out many demons and healed many of the sick, anointing them with oil. God's invitation to the kingdom is through repentance and faith. And always what God expects, he gives. God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, to receive the gifts of repentance and faith. And so he came. And he lived perfectly. He died innocently. He rose victoriously. And his gifts to the church, that's you and me, repentance and faith, to be received and internalized and lived to be given to the world and those places where he chooses to take us day by day. On my prayer walk, I saw one word posted in print, painted on boarded windows, buildings that uh, hide the destruction that had taken place. One word, more than any other, yeah, justice, justice.
God's justice is that all people have what he wants them to have. And he wants all people, beginning with you and me, to have the kingdom of heaven, to have repentance and faith that permeates and lives in our very, the core of our being, that animates all the things that we think and say and do. God's justice happens when he reconciles sinful humanity to himself through the perfect life, innocent death, powerful resurrection of Jesus, and then collectively, all whom God has restored to himself are called to lead in achieving the justice Micah style. Doing justice. Loving, you got it, mercy. Walking, yeah, humbly with your God. Modeling to the world what it means to pursue contentment, the contentment of living in the tensions of his grace. And so Jesus' instructions to the disciples in uh, Matthew 10 are our instructions. As you, he said, as, as you go, say, the kingdom of heaven is here. To be able to write this on the forehead of our mind, post-it note on your bathroom uh, mirror, yeah, that, and post it on your refrigerator door and whatever it is. I know God wants everyone I meet to receive the kingdom of heaven. He wants them to receive repentance and faith, his gifts that live in me, and he wants to live through me to others to pursue the contentment of living in the tensions of his grace. And he goes on, I'm sending you out like sheep among the wolves. That's an interesting picture on your mind, huh? I am to know Jesus' voice so well, so well, mining the truths of Scripture, that with all the other voices out there I know, I know the voice of one who is calling me to follow only him in the circumstance in the world in which he has placed me. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. I like that, uh, that phrase, and, and it's a rather fascinating one to me anyway. Shrewd means to be intelligent, be prudent, be sensible, be wise. Keep your head. Informed by the Spirit, the places that one goes, and be as innocent as doves. It simply means don't get mixed in your thinking about what God is saying and what the world is saying. And don't try to weave these things together because it will end up being a distorted message of the Spirit of truth that God has placed in us. God sends us out to be part of the solution not to exacerbate the problem. And God wants through us, everyone to receive the kingdom of heaven, repentance and faith to be lived in a world that so desperately needs it. I think coming up in a few weeks, three weeks, I think, we begin a three-week series of kingdom parables, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, one of the kingdom parables talks about uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and I would say uh, repentance and faith is like a woman who sows uh, yeast into a batch of dough so that when it is completed, the whole dough is leavened. That's who we are as God's people. And we are good news people, and we look for good news. Look for good news. I'm intrigued by two good news stories regarding real people right in the area where most of the rioting were began and where third precinct was burned down. One is a firefighter in another uh, suburb who 
who had a dream to open a sports bar in that area, and he was going to wait until COVID was done and his place was torn apart, was looted. He lost everything. He put everything he had in it. It's, this is a fascinating family. I read the story of this family. He's called a community entrepreneur where he lives, and I'm trying to wrap my head around that. But he put everything there, and, and he cried, and, and all of a sudden there's a GoFundMe, and he's hoping for $100,000, but 37,000 people contributed almost $1.2 million. Crystal was telling me, I suppose I have to pay her five bucks for this. <coughs> of an African-American man as the only African-American distillery in the United States in that area, and it got destroyed. So he started a GoFundMe. He started a GoFundMe so that he can use that GoFundMe money to help other people in the neighborhood. Because he has some insurance, and he's not sure the others do. It's a good news story. People who contribute to that are people uh, who, who are leavening the community. The, the hundreds of volunteers who walk Lay Street every single morning after, after it was torn apart to clean it up. There was a lot of leavening happening there, I believe. And then the thousands of bags of groceries that were just left on the street every day. I would guess there was a whole lot of leavening, the kingdom of God stuff. And, and the five carloads of groceries that left this place, drawn from the community to this place, to go down to Sherman School. There was a lot of leavening, kingdom of God stuff happening in the face of all that. And I would believe many of you out there are diving into scriptures, and you're praying, Lord, whenever the next normal comes, Got that from Craig McCourt, another, one of the young pastors. Now, he may be your age, but whatever the next normal is, how we are going to be the church, we're thinking about that, and we're praying about that, because we are God's people, and we are to be known by love. It was costly for our Lord, and it's costly for us. We are to live by faith, which presupposes repentance, gifts of God. So that we can leaven our communities with the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Michaela. Will you confess your faith with us using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from, from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, uh, this is Father's Day. Uh, we've been tracking Dick Byersdorfer. He was hospitalized in a couple places for a little bit. Understand, he's back at assisted living at um, the Legacy of St. Anthony. Howard uh, Howard Schrader is uh, uh, likely uh, nearing the end of his earthly life to be with his Lord in, in heaven, and uh, he was hospitalized uh, and has moved to a facility in Pine City to be close to. Uh, family friend, uh, Jeff Lee, and his wife. And then we hear that Gary Speketer, former member, uh, broke a pelvis from a fall. Uh, I'm continually in touch with him. I didn't know this, but uh, he's, he's been having just kind of sudden blackout moments, and he, and he falls, and 
he's got a long way to fall. So, uh, so uh, yeah, um, if you would like to talk with them, uh, I, let me know. I'll give you a phone number. And then from my pastor friend who is, uh, uh, who is a uh, that part-time chaplain of Minneapolis Police Department, he says, I ask you to pray fervently for all of our first responders, especially our police officers. The men and women of the Minneapolis Police Department are some of the finest people I have ever encountered, and they work day in and day out protecting the public from all kinds of evil. I want us to hear that and to internalize it. And I have been brought to tears from seeing the deep pain that these men and women are experiencing right now. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for one another. Thank you, dear Father, for the gift of Jesus, his perfect life, his innocent death, his resurrection for our forgiveness and salvation. Thank you for the contentment of living in the tensions of your grace, daily dying to sin and rising to the newness of life. Thank you for entrusting the kingdom of heaven to us, even though we often feel unequal to that trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You establish your church as a school for mission to the world. Rekindle that missionary zeal in our hearts, in the hearts of all leaders in the church, and in each one of us. Free us from worldly passions and preoccupations, and free us to announce the kingdom of heaven to all whom Christ has redeemed. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen the hearts and the faith of everyone who is hated for naming Jesus as Lord. Keep them from repaying evil with evil, but instead by their gentleness, patience, and steadfastness, turn the hearts of, their, of gospel haters to repentance and faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. Fashion this congregation into a missionary outpost. Continue to train it as a school for discipleship, a hot spot of generous service, and a temple resounding with your praise. Teach us simple ways of sharing your love with everyone we meet, and give us the strength and will to do them. We bring before you now those people you have laid on our hearts and minds, and we name them before you now. May they also with us pursue the contentment of living in the tensions of your amazing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Because Jesus called you Abba, Father, we too may call you Father. Be the model for every father and all who act with a father's care. Give them strength with gentleness, firmness with patience, authority with self-sacrificing love, Bring us to honor and thank them even though they are not perfect. Be the sure protector of all who do not have a loving Father in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Fill the leaders of nations and everyone in positions of authority with righteousness, wisdom, integrity. And help us to live insofar as, as it is up to us at peace with our neighbors even though we, we may be annoyed with them. Help us to care for the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the abused, even when they're, we are stressed out and stretched thin. Help us to forgive each other, even when that seems hard. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. deliver from evil all who risk their lives in defense of liberty and life. Our firefighters, police women and men, our military personnel, and all who work to prevent sinister forces achieving evil intent. Guide them in the pathways of integrity and valor and honor and justice. Heal them when they fail in the accomplishments of their duties. Restore them in honor to their families and communities. Lord, in your mercy, bring health and gladness to all whose lives are shadowed by pain suffering or sorrow. Especially we lift up Dana Nelson, we lift up uh, Michael Bratz, 
lift up Gary Spector as he recovers. We give you thanks that Dick Byersdorfer has returned to uh, the, the legacy of St. Anthony. And we place our friend, longtime friend, Howard Schrader, into your gracious care. May your kingdom come and your will be done. Be their light in life, their guide in joy. Raise them, give them all that they need, Lord, from your gracious hands. Shelter them always with your loving care, Lord, in your mercy. Father, we entrust our beloved dead into your care. Hold them in the palm of your gracious hand. Keep them and, and uh, deliver all of us from temptation, from sin and suffering. Command your holy angels to shield us from the evil one. And by the cross of your beloved Son, lead us safely into your presence. There with all whom you have redeemed and raised up, grant that we may delight in praising your goodness and mercy forever. forever. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us here in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You know, as we go, I want you to be in the Word. I'm going to be asking uh, our pastor, whose wonderful face I've been seeing all this time, what the psalm is for next week. 139. 139. I knew he would have it on the tip of his tongue. Uh, be in that one, reading it several times, several uh, different um, um, translations, and uh, come prepared for Zoom. Until then, we are God's people in God's world where he is acting redemptively in and through each one of us as well. To that end, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you with his favor and give you his peace. God's people say, Amen. Amen.